Hey, my name is Trisha Man Grant, and you are watching me on Topaz Online Video Mag. Take your phony, untalented, fake ass home. Jimmy, you took that again. Take it away. <laughs> Why don't give me those self righteous ones, Gabby? We're filthy rich right now. We'd be filthy rich right now. Edmundo, what are you talking about? DollarPreview.com brings you the new blood of Hollywood. When you want to see something you've never seen before, now you have a choice. Oscar my show style, baby. Oh, are you filming? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> what would be your preference? Live performance or film work? Wow. Ah, I, I, you know, I, I have been asked that question before. I love theater. I love the magic of theater. I love the things that happen and how you can sometimes ad lib or if something falls you pick it up you just do like you do in real life uh, things happen St lights may not come on okay you you go with the flow you can't get stuck and so it's that in the moment thing about theater that I love it's it's finding moments in theater are you trying to say that I'm the reason you're not with your husband am I the reason you're not with yours Film, I love the fact that you can cut and have an opportunity to have another take, but sometimes that magic, that, that thing gets lost because there's takes after take after take. Now me, I try my best to be a one or two taker. I do. I try my best not to have to go, if the director says so, over three or four takes. Uh, try to get that thing right because when it comes to the editing process you're not there in the editing room so <laughs> when you see the movie once it's finished you better hope that most of your takes were good because the editor <laughs> or the director and the editor together may not pick the one that you thought was a good one <laughs> that was, yeah, that that was great. Okay, okay. I think it Doug would have killed on him like yo I'm gonna just do this alright let's go here we go here we go right away right away you Doug all right, and <clears throat> stepping back, and action. <laughs> wait, what? Wait, I'm so real. Is it the beginning? <laughs> or what? Are you guys going for? Oh, okay. Oh, wait, Colliding. Yeah, okay. I, I knew that. I was okay. investing okay. in you. Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> all right. Matter of fact, you know what? Let's take it all the way back to the door. Go back to the door. Yeah, okay? give me some motivation. Okay, okay. Yeah, we're going to go all the way from the door. Thank you. All right. <laughs> okay. And it's the same with doing print work. When I did print work for Ebony and Jet, sometimes I would look at the pictures and go, um, why? Why, why, why did they choose this one? This, this, really? This, out of all those pictures we took and y'all chose this picture? Yeah, that, I think I had that moment quite a lot. I think I liked out of all the pictures I took, I probably liked about two of them. Yeah. Yeah, I'm hard on myself though. <laughs> Meet your husband and, and, and how that how did that play out? Did, was it love at first sight? What, what, how, how did it all go down? You know what? He tells that story so much better than me. So I will give it a stab because I actually met Tony Grant 17 and a half years ago when, oh Lord, it's going on 18 years. This year is flying by. Uh, almost 18 years ago when I first moved to LA and a friend of ours named Clyde Jones came to pick me up to take me to a script reading and Tony just happened to be in the car 
And so he reminded me after reconnecting with him in The Cleanup Woman, where he came on to fill in for the late Ollie Woodson. But at the end of the day, you're gonna still be the stepdaddy. <laughs> Let me tell you something, Earl. I ain't nobody's stepdaddy. I'm just a daddy that stepped up. And so, Tony reminded me, yeah, you don't remember, you met me. Uh, when Clyde came to pick you up, and I'm like, uh, no. He said, yeah, yeah, I, I got out of the front seat, and, and I got in the back seat. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry, I barely remember. Or remember the time I was with my ex-wife, and you all did a play, and she introduced me, and I was like, um... He said, Trisha, I sang at the end of the show. You want a real man? I run down on my knees. I'm begging you, please, baby, I'll fall. I said, I kind of remember, but I actually saw him several times throughout the 18 year period, and maybe it was just best. Or it just wasn't meant at that time for me to have my eyes open to him. And I say, mm, during the clean up woman process, we did a lot of talking and that man can talk. He, he really can talk, my husband, and he did a lot of good talking. <laughs> Christopher Williams teased me one day. He said, mm -hmm, I see what's going on. He gonna talk his way right into them panties. I was like, oh. Christopher, he said, that's what happened to my sister. Her husband just kept talking, 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 and next thing you know, they got married. <laughs> I love to write just as much as I love to act, and I write poetry. I have a CD on CD Baby, uh, and it has music, and a very theatrically done piece with Vince Walker, featuring his music, featuring him singing, uh, and it's called Don't Beat the Love Out of Me. In my face like First of all, let me explain something to you. I heard face. every word that you said. Oh my God, you're so controlled. Look, I cannot believe you. Hey, me. I know you hear me talking to you. What are you doing? Get out of my face. Who are you talking go. to? Let me go. What? what? epidemic of domestic violence is the focal point of this powerful coffee table book. While this book educates on the spiraling epidemic of domestic violence, it also gives hope and positive light to its readers through encouragement, self-proclamation, and the knowledge that there is power beyond the fist and life beyond the deadly grips of domestic violence. Survivor's Celebration of Life Beyond Domestic Violence. O Tahira. How do you stop domestic violence? Talk about it. Don't worry, I'll take care of this. I'm still here 
here. Can you hear me? Hello? It's just a flat. I'll fix it for you right away. <sighs> Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Can she dance? I'm just gonna have to come and see how pathetic you are on stage. I mean, really, do you know how work a Are you here for the audition too? There is one other girl that we're supposed to be taking a look at. And her agent says that she ain't open enough for that. But, yeah, and then she's not. On Dollar Per View. I'm all about the dance. I play Tammy Pettiford. She was a no-nonsense choreographer. And Tammy just would not take any mess off of any of the girls. She ran a tight ship in her studio. And uh, for the lead, Jennifer Johnson, she bonded with her more than any of the other girls and actually had an empathetic heart toward her because she saw her potential. And I think really maybe Jennifer's character reminded Tammy of herself when she was starting off dancing and that's why there was a connection. It is your style that leaves a different print. You know La Brea? You know I've done many projects and with each one people anywhere can recognize my print. You know When that happens, it is time to shake hands with your successors, sit back, and watch you do that thing. But it's also a love story between Jennifer Johnson's character and Tony Topaz's character. Hey! So can you please explain something to me? Okay? How come out of this big roof in this apartment, you have to dance right on top of my head? <laughs> What's that about? Because if I didn't, you'd never make it to work on time. And then you'd wind up getting fired. And then I'd have to rent your apartment out to a new tenant. And then I'd just lose my rooftop. Oh, I see. So this is all about being logical. So what if we just swap apartments? Matter of fact, to avoid the cat and mouse, why don't you just move in with me? Nice try, Nico. You must, must watch All About the Dance. Lord have mercy, Bertha, do you see him? I'm the man in 3B. Uh -huh. I play the role of Nancy. She's married, but she has a man on the side that she really, truly is in love with. She loves her husband, but not enough. Huh. <laughs> Are you? I'm Daryl. Daryl Graham. Hey, we... Connie. Connie Graham. What, we cousins? No, 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 did I say Graham? I didn't mean to say Graham. My name is Mac. My name is Connie. Connie Mac. Did you just get this like two months ago? You want to hit a home run with me? Just Get listen. rid of your wife. No matter what, I got your back. Damn, that brings back memories. I just forgot how good we were together. Damn, we are good together, huh? You two carrots. Look at this, this is beautiful. You're beautiful. Kill that son of a bitch! Open up this door! Connie Mack is still my wife. And I'll come around here pissing her off whenever I want. Don't make me tell you again. Or what? You come by here again, and you gonna talk to my nine. Chris, what the hell is going on? That's a big word. You better hope you kill me. This ain't over. I will. We got a body in apartment 3B. This is not only a case of arson. But it's also a murder investigation. What's all this about the money? He gave you money, you gave him money, what? Word on the street is that you weren't really too fond of Daryl Graham. I'm not too fond of a lot of people. Were you aware of anyone who may have a beef or a grudge against Mr. Graham? I said I wished he was dead, but I didn't kill him. I live by this philosophy. It's simple. All you have to do is leave everything negative in your life behind. You don't want to do that, brother. 
The same energy you put into dying is the same energy you put into living. Just tell me how to get to my money. Sounds like you got quite a rep there. It's a rep I'm trying to leave behind me, just trying to live my life the best way I can. If you're looking for a man in 3D, you better watch out, he's a hustling. Carl Weber has these amazing books out there, and he is working with Indy and Trey from Tridestin Films, and they are shooting all of his work. So if you guys have books out there or scripts out there, Get in touch with Tridestin, but wait until after I give them my script, and then you can come on, uh, you know, we can work it out. <laughs> Tyler Perry is a wonderful director, and I'm not just saying that because I want another job, Tyler. Even though I do, but I'm just saying, you really are. Tyler is fun. Uh, he was singing country songs and playing country music right before our scene, so that helped me to loosen <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he walked on set, looked at me and said, okay, let me see what you got. I was like, okay. And then I showed him and he's like, okay, that's funny. He said that without a smile. He said, that's funny, that's funny. Okay, uh, all right, so do this, 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 and that. And this, 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 and that. Just add that to what you're already doing and let's do this. And we shot that scene two times. And I think he still used some stuff from the first take, from what I remember. <laughs> oh, wow, this is a nice house. Thank you. Yeah, you know what? I like the decorations. Yeah, my wife did them. When? Before she died. <gasps> oh. Oh. No, 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 no. What? Yes. See, see. Sometimes when people die, they, they come back and, and they just start moving things. Oh, oh, right there, right there. Did you see that move? Did you see it? They start moving things all over the place. Like when my grandfather died. Yeah, he just moved his picture from the, 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 the living room to the kitchen to over grandma's bed. I mean, who does that? <laughs> oh. Get your crazy ass up out of here. Ooh. Do you like dogs? I have a pit bull. Yes, I mean, first. <laughs> Assistant Motives, Jean-Claude Lamar. He is the director and writer for Assistant Motives. I play opposite Trey Ireland and Paula J. Parker is in this. And it's a really, really good story. And I play a lawyer. And our assistant in the law firm has her eye on my husband. The job pays $11 an hour. can do all of that. How about that cutie pie boss of yours? So, uh, what's that girl doing here this early? I forgot my house keys on my desk. So, tell me about your husband and why you all ended your marriage. Come on, we just what wanna... about, what, what are you doing? I shouldn't be here with you living without my son going through a divorce. If you ever give my husband flowers again, I promise you I will fire you on the spot. And I need some help. Uh-huh. Street help. What the f hell, you bitch! Oh, Paul Hanna. Who can I run to? That's coming out on DVD. We're practically beating them off with a stick. It's like, ba, 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 ba. Oh, hold on. You and A. A was beating them off. All you were trying to do was snatch up his crumbs. Let's go, give me some, give me some. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> There is something so special about a fine man who can sing. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Baby, could you bring me a beer? Mm -hmm. Bring me one too, sugar. <laughs> Y'all, this tour is gonna be fire. Poison Sky, I play Rebecca Dubois. Steve Warko is the writer and director of this wonderful piece. Tony Topaz also helped him, and I have worked with Tony many, many times. Truly, truly a great, talented man, I must say. And this script is really good, so I don't want to give anything away. I'm not going to go into detail about it other than it's called Poison Sky. So that gives you, hmm, hint, hint, 
pretty much what it's about. But Glenn and I have a few really intense scenes, and uh, my character, mmm, she's something else. <laughs> We're going to call a press conference so that I can tell the people that our product, our product, is safe. Okay, wait, wait, hold on. Wait. First of all, you need to calm down. And second of all, we need to remember the contract that we have with the government that we do not want to lose. And why don't we want to lose it? Why don't we want to lose it? Because it is worth, oh, $60 billion. Maybe I need to repeat that. $60 billion. And they are giving it to us over a five-year span. Not to mention, they have already told us that we are going to get an upgrade on the formula, the new CW. Take care of this. I'm still here. Can you hear me? Hello? It's just a flat. I'll fix it for you right away. <sighs> A lot. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> is not going to happen overnight and anything that happens overnight you have to be very leery of because if it's given to you that quickly it can be taken away just as fast so sometimes it's best to put the work in and grind and, and pay your dues uh, I've, I've dealt with lots of challenges I've cried many many tears <laughs> uh, when I first moved out here when I was in my apartment, I remember being crouched under my table, crying and praying and crying out to God and drinking some Alize and <laughs> just drowning in my own pathetic little self-pity party. And sometimes all we have to do is put the work in. And I'm going to be very honest with you. I haven't put the work in like I should have, or I think I would have been a lot further by now. And I know that God, who is my source, and um, prayer and belief and faith have helped me up until this, this point. And He knows my future. He already knows what He has for me. I don't know why things are happening later in my life. You know, I'm of the more mature crowd, <laughs> but I, I don't mind. I, I'm more seasoned, as they would say, but I don't mind that because I've been through so much. I know what mistakes not to make anymore, and we all are going to continuously have challenges through our life, but I can honestly say that prayer plus faith equals power, more power, and less prayer plus less faith and fear equals less power. So um, that has truly, truly been my rock, is just believing and knowing that God didn't give me the talents and the gifts that he gave me for nothing and that I have got to use them and I can't do it lying on my back, uh, sleeping with the casting director or the director because at some point you have to have some type of integrity and that's one wonderful thing I can say I've never done 
and uh, yeah, maybe that's why it's taken so long because I've said no a few times or declined roles because uh, they were not quite appropriate. Yeah, I've said some cuss words in some roles. I've done a few things where I wish I could just go back and go, no, I'm not going to do this, but it's too late now. And so I think we all have those uh, films or projects we've done in the past that we wish we hadn't, but that's all part of the growing process. You know, I don't have time for regrets. Um, I don't even have time to hold grudges and worry about the mistakes from the past. I just have to learn from them and grow through them and continuously elevate upward. So I would say to any young lady or young man out there trying to pursue this business, make sure that you have some strong beliefs. Make sure your beliefs are valid. Make sure that you do not compromise yourself for anyone because where one door closes, another one can open. And just because this one person was gonna give you a shot and they decided not to, it's okay, it's okay. There's somebody else out there that probably have more clout than they do. So don't be discouraged when things don't happen. Just keep on pushing. And I'm still pushing, because I'm still working on getting to a certain level. And it used to be a time that I wanted to attain fame because I needed that. The insecure part of me needed the accolades and, and uh, you know, all that love. But that stuff is false when you really think about it. I don't need the fame anymore. I need the power of the platform so that my voice can be heard, so that I can be a blessing, so that I can inspire and touch and help someone else through my stories, my testimonies, through my past challenges, and through my gift and my talents. How can I help someone through every role that I play? So to me, that now is more important than back in the day when I first moved to LA and I just wanted to be famous. What's famous gonna do for me if there's no substance with it? So. Go for the substance. Don't let no be your final curtain. And just believe more in you than you do believe in what people are telling you or they can offer you. And believe in God, most of all. Just unattractive flattery Weightless and effortless The thought of your kiss Brought me this I'm high in the sky And I feel I won't know how to land And if my insecurities Get the best of me Keep me in flight And if I must come down Please let it be Producing multiple echoes through the